It's so good to have one of our favorite guest musicians, guitarist Javier Estrada back with us today. Thank you, Javier, for coming to play for us. As many of you will recall, Javier was in a serious accident just a few months ago. And he is just now beginning to be able to play again on his guitar, and we're so happy he came back to play for us today. So welcome everyone to our Sunday service here at the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of San Miguel. Bienvenidos todos al servicio de los unitarios Universalistas, I always get that one a little complicated, de San Miguel de Allende. This is a place where we can bring our whole selves and be accepted as we are with love and friendship. Este es un lugar donde podemos traer todo nuestro ser y ser aceptados tal como somos, con amor y amistad. My name is Susan McDonnell, and Ron Lennox and I will be sharing service leading today. We have a few important announcements. I'll try to go through these relatively quickly, but they are important. Please remember that we need donations for our November fundraising auction. Notices are in, the, um, in our newsletter, our weekly newsletter, and there's some flyers here on the table during coffee hour. I believe, is Jerry here today? Jerry Rosing, our chair? of auction? No, he's not. But Diana, way in the back, is also working with him on that. So if you have questions, right behind you is Diana in a beautiful blue dress. She'll tell you more about how to donate an item. It might not be an item. It might be you'll cook dinner for six people and they can bid on it. Or you might have a condo to have them bid on a vacation spot on the beach or in the US. So it's really exciting. Just contact Diana, pick up an info flyer, and help us raise lots of money for our fellowship. If you love to sing, you'll see lots of hymn leaders over there today. Um, you can contact Marjorie Byrne or Helen Rivas Rose. Uh, they can wave their hands. There they are right there and you can find them during coffee hour off to the side and let them know that you might like to join sometime. You don't have to come every Sunday. You come when you can. You'll get a taste of it today. We have, um, Ellie's asked me just to let you know that a friend, Rick Kamen and his wife are here today. Rick might raise his hand. He's got a flyer in the back. He's got a book that's come out and he will be doing a reading of that book, I believe as a fundraiser for ABBA soon. So you could talk to him about that. Um, Stan's gonna go say hi to him and um, pick up some information on his book and, and about the event. After the service, those who are on Zoom are always, of course, invited to stay connected and chat with each other. Let, let each other know how you liked the service. There's a usually a question for you to answer. I think today it's what did you learn about La Alborada and the fiestas that you didn't know before? And um, you will find out why we hear so many boomers this time of the year. Those of us at the Aldea can join us after the service for coffee and refreshments. Take your coffee and check out the welcome table. There's information on how to become a member and information on activities like our Thursday afternoon lunch and games at La Frontera Restaurant, Reverend Tom's Coffee Hour on Zoom every Tuesday, lots of other things. So some of those are in the order of service, and you can always go to uufsma.org and look up our activities and information on membership. We have some visitors today with us that I know about with these cards, so I will let you know. We have a visitor named Isaiah who heard about us from his friend Bria Singer. Any visitors who would like to rise so we can see who you are, that would be awesome. And we'll <laughs> greet you during coffee hour. And we have Sherry who just stood up and now she, you saw her. 
She heard about us on the civil list, so she's here probably just for this service, perhaps um, because she read about it. And that's great to have you here. Thank you. And we have visitors Greg and Donna who are here today visiting, and they heard about us and the service through Ephraim. Good, thank you. If there are other visitors whose names I wasn't given, if you want to stand and wave so we can see you and greet you during coffee hour. There's a lovely visitor in a red dress. Okay. Look for the, um, it's the stickers that are usually telling us that somebody's a visitor or an infrequent comer. So um, meet them after their service. We do record our Sunday in-person services. You can always find past services by going to our website, uufsma.org, and click on past services. And we also have a YouTube channel. It's really worth your while to, to watch a service you might have missed. There's some real treasures on there. And Diego and his crew are the ones who finalize those <clears throat> and get those posted for us, so it's a wonderful resource. That's the end of the announcements. Um, so we will now begin our service for real. <clears throat> Our opening words this morning are from Albert Schweitzer, a great American humanitarian that many of us will recall from back in our younger days. At times our own light goes out and is rekindled by a, a spark from another person. Each of us has cause to think with deep gratitude of those who have lighted the flame within us. So let's join our voices, <clears throat> excuse me, together in song. Hymn number 361, although I'll call your attention to the words on the screen, the verses are in a little bit different order, perhaps, than the hymnal, and two of them are in Spanish. So just watch the screen, and if you're not familiar with the tune, you will be soon, um, because our hymn leaders are going to help you out. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Would you stand and then remain standing for the covenant?
Ron and I will lead our covenant with you. Ron will go first with the English and I will read the Spanish. Please join with me. We respect the interdependent web of life and work for a peaceful and peaceful world. We encourage the search for truth and meaning, strive for compassion in our relationships, and seek values that will benefit our lives and the lives of others. This is our covenant. Respetamos todos los estilos de vida dentro de su red interdependiente y trabajamos por un mundo justo y pacífico. Alentamos la búsqueda de la verdad y la comprensión total. Nos esforzamos por mantener compasión en nuestras relaciones y buscamos valores que benefician nuestras vidas y las vidas de los demás. Este es nuestro convenio. Thank you so much. You can sit. So we now enter a time in our service when as a community we can share each other's sorrows and concerns. And I invite everyone who came here electronically or in person to take a calming breath and feel your presence here with us in this room and at home. As we gather each week together, we light candles for what's in our hearts. Each candle we light signifies that thought that person is held by all of us. This is part of weaving our community together. If you'd like to share a joy or concern in the future, um, you can email our minister, Tom Rosiello, directly or write something on a card when you arrive and um, it will be shared during the service. Those on Zoom, if you have something really on your heart today, you may post it in the chat and uh, one of our folks here will watch for that. We have quite a few important joys and concerns. We always have important joys and concerns. We have some that really are moving us today. We light our first candle with great sadness as we share with you a tremendous loss to one of our fellowship members, actually two members, Carla um, Yadira Espinoza Padilla and her son Jerome, who are both members of our fellowship. I'll share with you what Reverend Rosiello wrote to us this week in a special email to members. It's with great sadness that I write to inform you of the death of Ariel Diaz Lopez, the dad of one of our wonderful youth, Jerome, and the ex-spouse of our active member, Carla Espinosa, who just two weeks ago, you might recall, delivered a message about a language of love at our Sunday service. You may have met Ariel in past Sunday services when he's been here with his son, with Carla. In Carla's words, he was a great father and a strong believer in justice. Carla informed Tom that they're collecting funds to help with funeral expenses and the family would appreciate any help you can give. Reverend Tom will send us more information as he has that available. We light our second candle to send best wishes for a quick recovery to Cornelia Ulrich a member of our fellowship and a member of the fellowship's first women's group, Mis Hermanas. Cornelia was in Mexico City getting ready to depart for six weeks in Europe when she realized she had something concerning happening with her, one of her eyes. She fortunately rushed to the doctor who diagnosed her with a detaching retina. So she had to cancel her flight to Vienna and instead had emergency surgery in Mexico City just a few days ago. We're all grateful that she got that diagnosis really quickly and before she got on a plane. She'll be there for another several weeks while she recovers and we can all join in sending her our best wishes for recovery. I hope she's watching today. We light our next candle for our wonderful staff member and website manager, Yvonne Mendez, who is recovering from a case of dengue fever. 
we send him our get well wishes. Apparently, he, it just takes a long time to get over dengue fever. So he's just tired and weak, and he still got our online order of service out <laughs> for this morning. So Yvonne, we hope you are feeling a lot better. And we're happy to light the next candle for Mark Johanningsmeyer, who had successful vascular surgery recently, and he's at home tethered to a machine to help him heal. He can't leave the house during his recovery, so I will read his words. He says, since I am under house arrest, any visits or phone calls, emails, or FaceTime would be welcome. I'm hoping to get through this with a sense of humor and maybe a little sanity. So we send him our thoughts and prayers, and if you know Mark, even if you don't, send him an email, go visit him. He would really love the company. We have a few birthdays to celebrate. Ray DeVoe recently celebrated his 89th birthday. I don't know if he's here with us today. Happy birthday. There's Ray. Yeah, he's here. Yeah. Hi, Ray. We wish him all the best in blowing out. Well, he already blew them out, all 89 of his candles, and one to grow on. And we wish a very Happy Feliz Cumpleaños to member Mary Lou Aguirre, but I'm not sure I've seen them today. Mary Lou is celebrating her birthday today. We don't know how old she is, but she's probably home because it's her birthday. And we have a joy of um, a candle of gratitude from um, Stan, Stan Allen. And he writes, my joy is gratitude to the UU fellowship for its long-term support of Abba House and the migrants they serve, and the recent formal partnership with the Social Justice Foundation and its governors. I'm excited, he writes, that we will share this new journey into a transformative future together in the service of social justice for one of the most voiceless but courageous populations. We are all migrants, he reminds us. And as we have done for many months, to remember that our caring extends from this community to the, greater, to the wider world, we light our blue and yellow candle for all the suffering and deaths on both sides, resulting from Russia's invasion of Ukraine now two and a half years ago. And we light our red candle as we hold in our hearts those living through the ongoing horror and suffering in Gaza and Israel, both the civilians and military, those killed and kidnapped on October 7th, and now more than 40,000 Palestinians have died in, this, in their struggle to survive what is an ongoing humanitarian crisis. Now we, we light our final candle and hold a moment of silence for all of those joys, sorrows, and concerns that we might have in our heart that we haven't shared today, but are held unspoken. Now while Jerry Fastrup plays for us two waltzes from Valses Poeticos. You may come forward and Ron and I will help you light candles for your own joy or concern.
Good morning. My name is Ron Lennox, and I am a member of these Sunday Services Committee, and today I'm helping out Susan with the co-anchors co on the uh, service team. September is fast approaching, and it comes with two very, very important events. The first of which is on sep uh, September the 16th. We all know it's Independence Day for Mexico, and then we'll have two days worth of wonderful celebrations. Also in September, we celebrate Fiestas Patronales in honor of our own patron saint, St. Peter. St. Peter. St. <laughs> Michael, how's that? <laughs> I meant to do that. <laughs> it culminates with La Barada. This year, starting at the very early hours, probably around 4 a.m., on September the 28th. The Fiesta Patronalis is deeply rooted in the local culture. These festi festivities are a celebration of pride and identity of the San Miguel families, and it attracts visitors from all over Mexico and now the world. We have invited the experts on our local culture and traditions to connect the dots for us today, explain why this spectacle is so important to the local residents of San Miguel. It is my great pleasure to in introduce you to my friends Efrain and Laura, who are our special guests today and speakers today. Laura's family has lived in San Miguel for generations. In fact, her family has had the responsibility or the privilege or the honor to escort the Lord of the Column from Antetonilco to San Miguel and then back again with the procession and lighting the way with, with lanterns for 102 years. She's been around for a while, not her, but her family. <laughs> Efren was born in Lyon. His family uh, migrated to the US when he was three years old. He grew up in California and raised his son, Anthony. He returned to Mexico in 2002. He's, a company, he's an accomplished artist, teacher, and mentor. He has worked with many of the, uh, of the NGOs that we're well aware of. Ojala Niños, the Children's Art Foundation. He's very active still in the Little Picasso program. Jovenes Adelante and Casa. Together, Efron and Laura operate a language school in San Antonio, Somos Language Center, which offers language courses for grade school through university. Please join me in welcoming Laura and Efron, and let's learn all about La Barada. Ron, muchas gracias, amigo. Gracias. Thank you for that. It was very nice. It's such an emotional morning, uh, just sitting here watching Susan and Ron uh, with this ceremony, the lighting of the candles here. It's, it's, for me, it's kind of emotional. I'm already an emotional type of guy, okay? <laughs> and um, I just want to thank you. Thank you for being here with us today um, for this presentation on Alborada. Now, uh, I see familiar faces here. Some of you already know me personally, and, and Laura, my partner here. Just uh, briefly, Laura uh, was, both of us, she has more than 18 years of service in community, and likewise myself, okay? So we, in total, we have over 40 years of service, service to community. Laura was lead, the lead administrator for the uh, Santuario de Atoltonico Church, okay, for over 18 years. And she was also three years lead administrator for the, the parroquia here in Centro, okay? And I've been serving uh, strongly San Miguel de Allende for 15 years here in San Miguel, but in Mexico, 26 years in service. Okay, this is what we do, okay? We were, we were led uh, in this path together to serve, okay? Today we're gonna talk about Alborada. Now, uh, there's fiestas patronales and fiestas patrias, two different things, all in the same month. And las fiestas patrias are around the Independence Day, see? The, the word patria comes from the word patriot. 
So those are the patriotic festivities that are gonna be coming up um, in the beginning of the month, okay? And then we have festas patronales, okay? The word patronal comes from the word patron, as in patron saint, okay? Now, we know that we are celebrating 100 years of Alborada, okay? It is a special year for everybody here in San Miguel de Allende, see? And Alborada is very special, not only for San Miguel de Allende, but for us as members of the community of San Miguel, myself personally, and I know Laura herself as well. Laura will elaborate a little bit on, on the Al Alborada, see? And I would like to share with you that what we have been seeing lately in the last week or so of different processions and diff parades, see? Fireworks, okay? Th we call those reseñas, okay? Reseñas. Some of you already do know what a reseña is. Um, this, can somebody tell me, anybody know, what is a reseña? A rehearsal. A rehearsal. Very good, very good. You guys been paying attention. Okay. <laughs> See, a reseña is a rehearsal, but why would a parade need to be rehearsed? Block off streets, right? Take up time. Why would you, why would uh, the community of San Miguel de Allende, the local people, why would they do that, rehearse that? Does anybody know? Anybody? Okay. <laughs> okay, the rehearsals, reseñas, before the actual event, event whether it's Independence Day, whether it's uh, uh, the Alborada, whether it's St. Michael's Day, Okay, now the reseñas, the reason they do the reseñas, the rehearsals, is to ask for permission. See? They ask for permission, and they ask for the blessings, and they offer offerings. That, those are the reseñas. About a week ago, I don't know if you saw one of the processions, there was the donkey and the simulated bull going through the streets at the beginning of the reseña. Well, that donkey and that uh, steer is for the offerings. And the donkey, the burro, was carrying the fruits and the breads that are going to be offered for what's coming up ahead for us next month. You see? And all year round, we have processions and we have parades. We have festivities. Now, before the parades and before the festivities, there are smaller parades and smaller festivities leading up to that. That is the same thing. That is, remember not too long ago we had here in San Antonio, we had the, the Locos Parade? Right before the locals prayed, about two weeks beforehand, we had a few other lo smaller locals pray leading up to that. And that's the same reason. They are not just rehearsing. They're, they're asking for blessings, see? Gratitude. And recently, right before the rains, what were they doing? They were dancing and dance, dancing, dancing. And we're talking about the danzantes, the concheros, okay? When they dance, they don't just dance, hey, look at me. No, they're dancing too. They want to shake the ground. See, they want to shake the ground. <coughs> and that again is gratitude for what's just passed and blessings for what's to come, and offerings and permission. So they, the community of San Miguel de Yen, the locals, they do that all year round. We don't just say, we're gonna do a parade and let's get in the parade. <coughs> no, we prepare ahead of time. Just like the Alborada has been preparing for months back. 
six months behind Alborada has been preparing. Excuse me. Excuse me. Just like in our case, in our family, um, for Señor de la Columna, we have to prepare months and months beforehand. It's not just, you know, I, I don't want people to take it for granted just when you see somebody just doing a parade. It's not, it's no, for us it's much different. It's more than that, see? And, and some of these parades and processions, ha, each parade and procession has a committee. Some of these committees and some of these boards have been around for hundreds of years. And some of these committees, members in these committees and boards take it, take it really serious, okay? And our, in our case, we understand how to, that we have to prepare emotionally, physically, spiritually, and lose sleep and march and all that stuff. But we, we do it with pride and passion because our ancestors did it before us. Some of us do this because we have been inherited the task, in our case, carrying the lanterns in Laura's family. Her, her grandfather was the first one to, to carry that lantern 102 years ago. But now it's our turn. And we take the time to prepare these old kerosene lanterns. It takes six months beforehand of cleaning and taking the, the it, 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 because they're flammable and stuff. These are the old ones. And for each year, uh, our family has added a lantern for each, each year. Now we have 102 uh, lanterns. And so we look forward to this. We look, we look forward to the processions. We look forward to the parades. See? And I'm, I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited about all this. I'm, and I'm from here. Okay? And I, 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 I'm from here, and I'm passionate about our hometown. And when I walk in, down the street in Centro, I'm, I'm still in awe. As I walk around, and I see the buildings and the, and the things that are, the plaques on the buildings, and the mojigangas, and, you know, the donkey. And I'm, I'm fascinated. I'm in love with this town as you should be as well, because we, thank you. Gracias, gracias, gracias. And, and I say you should be as well, because we are very fortunate and blessed to be here in this community at this time, after what's going on around the world. See, we are very, we are very, we are very lucky. And I've been around. And I've been around. And, 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 and not being here, I'm like, oh my God. I'm the luckiest man just to be here and with having you as friends, being, doing what, do what we do here in community because we do this together. None of us do this alone. Laura doesn't do this alone. I don't, definitely don't do this alone. It takes a community, a community to do what we do and what we see in town, see? And mind you, it's been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's not something new, see? But let me, let, let me get into a little bit into La Alborada, okay? <clears throat> I'm, I'm gonna read this, okay? Just bear with me. <clears throat> The, est the Estrella March, Calzada de la Aurora. A star is born by Don Emigdio Ledesma, also known as by the locos, El Gordo. It's a nickname, okay? Mr. Emigdio Ledesma is the one that has carried this torch for us, okay? 
what is the most important festival in San Miguel de Allende called La Alborada would not have been have the, the splendor of mysticism that characterizes, characterizes it if it were not for the creative work of the star makers, Don Emigdio Ledesma and Don Alfonso Martinez. Okay. The, brill the brilliant brilliance of a shooting star is transferred to the wise gaze of Don Emigdio when he remembers when he was 10 years old and saw the stars brought to the convent of Las Monjas for the first time. Don Camilo Gonzalez and company from Hercules, Querétaro, brought them here. And Salvatre, Salvatierra introduced the strike and artistic pieces resulting from the cult they had of the Immaculate Conception. Seeing how beautiful they were and how much they attracted attention, the priest, the padre, Refugio Solis, would invite them to participate in the following year in the festival of San Miguel Archangel, a tradition that would no longer be a withered star. At the age of 15, Emilio joined the, the ranks of Fabrica La, La Aurora, where they became fascinated by the world of festivities and the creation of stars. There are 50 stars that are in our festival year after year, distinguishing among them the stars that are actually in the sky. The eyes of Santa Lucia, El Cometa, El Cometa, El Sol, and La Luna are the models that attract the most attention, as is the case of Las Siete Cabras, a star with eight peaks from which stars emerge smaller and whose design is unmistakable. Due to their large size, lighter star models are manufactured for children. Yeah. Being made of wooden frames so that the little ones can also carry their own star and be part of this great tradition. Laura stood up late last night and made this little beautiful little star for one of her little nieces that's, uh, I think, uh, gonna be three years old. Well, she's gonna dance this. This little girl is gonna, is gonna be in the procession year after year, and it, as she gets older, we will have to uh, make a bigger stock for her, okay? Likewise, the manufacturing of stars has evolved over time to facilitate their construction, and it is no longer straight rock roses from the river that are collected, but rather pieces of wood. They no longer use the slow paste as glue, but it has been replaced by resistol, which, pro which proved to be more effective. All of these changes have been inev inevitable. Don Emigidio still prefers to create his stars with paper mache, as is tradition and not the cellophane paper version. Although, although he recognizes that it looks very pretty at night with the effect of the candles. Just as, just as a 15 year old is excited to arrive at his big day, the equivalent of that feeling for both star makers is being able to arrive. If God gives them permission to the centenary of the Alborada, this was written a little over a year ago, anticipating this one, the 100 years, okay? So now you know, when you look up at the sky and see a magnificent and colorful star with sparkling colors, don't forget to make your wish and make that wish that the tradition of the stars of Don Emigdio never goes out. Discover every... Okay, we have workshops coming up uh, at Fabrica de Aurora. Um, I just met la maestra, no está la maestra Gloria. Por ahí anda la maestra Gloria. Can you stand up? This is maestra Gloria. She's to, she is in charge of the uh, reseña for the Alborada, for the committee. So we have her in a press stage. Let's give her one uh, hand warm applause.
Gracias, maestra. Okay. Now, this is special, and I decided to read this, but nice to, you may have saw some of the images of our founders of uh, our tr this particular tradition, Mr. Mr. Ledesma. And I'm so proud that he's here, not present, but he's still around with us, working and continuing this tradition. And he's, he's here to actually see the 100 years of Alborada, so that's gonna be kinda cool. And we have some special um, events coming up surrounding these 100 of years. And th those special events coming up, that's from uh, Cultura y Tradiciones uh, by the city. The city has something special in plan for this 100 year Alborada. We don't, we, don't, we don't know yet, but I'm sure it's gonna be pretty special. I hear they are, they are going to go out with a bang, okay? <laughs> so, so that's a little bit of Alborada. Alborada. I don't wanna go too much in the history, and that I want you to see what's going on now, how, what we feel, what we think. At this time, I would like to uh, ask Laura uh, if she can come up and, and, and tell us a little bit about uh, La Alborada. Laura, por favor. Please, gracias. Eh, buenos días. Les presento la estrella de Ivanita. Uh -huh. This is Ivanita's estrella. Ella tiene tres años. And she is three years old. Y ella participa en la reseña. And she participates in the reseña. Ella, como otras personas, niños, adultos, adulto mayor. She, like other uh, kids, younger kids, even adults, even uh, senior citizens. Que que preparan sus estrellas that prepare their and make their stars para bailarlas to dance them con la música with the music la banda with la música banda y la alegría and the joy de los sanmiguelenses of the sanmiguelenses aquí participan here they participate los principales barrios here the principal neighborhoods participate barrio de la estación Bar barrio de Estación. Barrio del Valle del Maíz. Valle del Maíz. Barrio de la Aurora. And Aurora. Todos nos reunimos. And we all meet. Será la, invi la invitación está abierta para ustedes. And the invitation is, is open to all of you. El 20 de septiembre a las 5 de la tarde. 20 of September at 5 p.m. Salimos de la Aurora. We, we leave from la Aurora. Esta subimos por calle Hidalgo. We go up uh, calle Hidalgo. Llegamos al jardín principal. And we meet at the jardín, the square. Al llegar al jardín principal. Once arriving. Bailamos alrededor del jardín. We will dance around the jardín. Agradeciendo a San Miguel Arcángel. Giving thanks to uh, the Archangel, St. Michael. Todas las bendiciones que nos ha dado. All the blessings that were, have been given to us. Un año más. One, another year. Agradecida por la vida. Uh, uh, and thankful for another day of life. Esta fiesta es el corazón principal. This, this fiesta is the heart, the principal heart. Es la unidad de la familia. It's the union of families. Desde la preparación de estrellas. From the, from the preparation of the stars. La preparación de las comunidades y la comida. The preparation of the communities and the food de las bandas, from the bandas, the music, de las danzas, from the, from the danzantes. Todo esto es una preparación de mucho tiempo. This is a preparation for, uh, that has been going on for a long time. Pero es, el objetivo es la unidad de la familia. The objective here is the union, union of family. Viene familia de diferentes lugares. Uh, families come from different uh, locations. Agradecer a San Miguel Arcángel to give thanks to uh, St. Michael. Y esta unidad es el corazón de San Miguel. This union that's coming up, it's the, it's the heart of San Miguel de Allende. Y ustedes son parte de este corazón. And you are part of this heart. Están bienvenidos a festejar. And you are welcome to come in and uh, join the festivities. Un año más. Another year more. 
al patrón de San Miguel Arcángel. To our patron saint, uh, Saint Michael. Estas fiestas. These, these uh, fiestas. Son eh, realizadas. They are made. Por los San Miguelenses. For the San Miguelenses. Para todos ustedes. For all of you. Y hoy con la maestra. And today with our maestra. Son parte de la organización. Uh, which is part of this organization. Y de corazón están todos invitados. And from our heart, you're all invited to be part of this with us. Ustedes son parte del corazón de San Miguel. You are part of the heart of San Miguel de Allende. Gracias. Gracias. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at this video on the monitors here, and you, it's, a, it's a brief video, and you, what's interesting about this is that you will, the reseñas, um, is for the kids and families, grandpa, grandma, and what, you, what you, you'll see in this video clip <coughs> is, you'll see families with their kids, their babies, marching and dancing in celebration of what Lord just spoke on. Please, video. Muchas gracias. As you saw in this video clip, you saw that, that there's a, a lot of uh, parents with babies and holding the babies and dancing. Now, they had to march from Aurora to the Jardín dancing with the babies. In the ba now, you know what's so beautiful about this is those kids on, on Papa's shoulders, guess what's going to happen? It's gonna carry on when he gets when that little boy. Uh, they're they're gonna carry the tradition. They're gonna remember that when they were when their father or mother used to carry them on their shoulders or in their arms. Years down the road, 15, 20 years from now, they're gonna be doing the same thing with joy and gratitude, like Laura had just said. See, now that is the alborada during the reseña. There is the other alborada at nighttime. We all know that one, right? <laughs> if you don't, I will elaborate just a little bit um, on this. A <clears throat> quiero de la noche. See, right around four o'clock, we start getting ready. In the morning, a.m. Four o'clock. Well, well, everybody's asleep. Everybody else is asleep. There are groups, and we are part of the groups, where we go to certain locations in Centro. And what's happening? Well, everybody else is asleep. We're with the el we're with the elders in the community. And what's happening behind the scenes while well, everybody else sleeps? Uh, they're preparing the altars, the abuelas. Uh, they prepare the altars for a sacred ceremony beforehand. 
in order for us to march and continue in this procession, this has to be done first by the grandmothers, okay? And we do that all night. So we don't get no sleep for those two, for two days. We don't sleep. Okay. But that's a, that is such a beautiful and, and, and emotional touching thing, experience to be there with these elders and these grandmothers and actually preparing their altar. And as I'm there and witness to this, the, the grandmother, she's, she's the high hierarchy there and next to her she may have a daughter or a granddaughter that's following in her steps in her journey you see that will continue we, it, this is all inheritance some people are inherited the task for the altars some are inherited to dance like the boy and his father. It's inherited. And this is why we are so passionate about this. This is why this is so big here at San Miguel de Allende. Somebody asked me, why in San Miguel de Allende uh, they do these festivals and parades such to an extreme? And I'll make it simple. Because of our history in San Miguel de Allende. This is where it began, our independence. Todo aquí, see? In this state, we're talking about four or 500 years. And it's so important because it's in the history books at school for the little kids. It talks about the history, it talks about Ignacio, it talks about Cura Hidalgo, the, the brothers Aldama, see? It's in the books. This is why we take it to heart here, and we go to the extreme of this. Now, the Alborada, when it happens at four o'clock, middle of the night, when we march in to the Jardín, que la entrada, entrada de los mariachis, have you heard of that? Entrada de los uchiles, you hear that? Now, entrada de los mariachis, you know why they, we have la entrada de los mariachis? Anybody? Anybody? Leslie, do you know why? <laughs> okay. The mariachis are, arrive early in the procession, right? To see this and be witness, witness of this, it's, it's impressive. Their task is to march into the jardín and sing what? For St. Michael. Las Mañanitas, to our patron saints. So in order for them to do that, they also have to be blessed, go through a ceremony and a blessing and all that in order for them to come in and sing Las Mañanitas to our present uh, patron saint outside the parroquia. See? The suchiles, the entrada comes all the way from a estacion, all the way up canal. And they're huge, and they carry them. Beautiful, and then they are draped, stood up in front of the gates of the parroquia. See, those, all that's part of the alborada, see? But we can't go too far into that. But the reason they put those there are because of the offerings for what's coming. And so when you see this, you hopefully, you, hopefully you can get, maybe get a little bit of understanding, uh, but um, I'm sure my friend Ron and myself, we'll, we're gonna share more information on our sites, see? Because this is what we like to do. We like to share this with you, see? Now, once, once the Jardín, the Alborada begins, for St. Michael Day, the Dia de San Miguel, you got the square of the Jardín, see? One side, you have government, city, city buildings, right? You know where the tourism office is, all that? That's 
that's where, it's, that's where uh, City Hall used to be. That's where the guy's jail used to be and all that stuff. That was government building. Across is the parroquia. See? Okay. So what happens is down at the bottom in front of the, the government buildings and in front of the parroquia, the explanada, there are stands. Okay? There are stands. About, they're spaced out maybe every... Uh, four, to, four to six feet. Large stands that have these tubes. And there are two man teams to stand, per stand. On top of the government, government buildings, on the roof, the same thing. They have stands, stands, stands. Every four to six feet, a different stand. And also up there on top of the roof, they have two man teams, all with hard hats and vests. Across the jardin, at the parroquia, up on the second part of the pillars of the second floor of the parroquia, they have stands up there. And there's uh, people picking out. They're back there, up there. Next to the parroquia, ¿cómo se llama la escuela de? La Santa Escuela Church, which is up to the left of the parroquia, the Santa Escuela. Well, on top of that roof, they also have those stands. Now, down on the bottom of the explanada, in front of the gates, they have stands, 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 four to six feet, two-man team. Now, the purpose of these stands are to what? Light fireworks. <laughs> now, see, but... <laughs> Don't take it the wrong way. We don't light fire, fireworks just to light fireworks, okay? Uh, mind you, I, I have pet, we have pets as well. We, we, you know, we do understand. We do understand. But the reason they do this is maybe some of you already know. When they kick it off and say, go, one man, comes over, puts the fire rockets in the tube. The other person standing there, and they all light up at the same time. So you got from front of the, um, the tourism office on the, on the front and on the roof, parroquia, explanada, Santa Escuela. All at one time, they shoot the fireworks above the jardin, up in the sky. Boom, 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 colors, and it's beautiful. For more than an hour, nonstop. <coughs> While that's happening, in front of the parroquia, in the explanada, the young, the young guys, what are they doing? Si, sí, andan bailando con los, los cuetes. They are dancing with the fireworks. They're being hit with these fireworks. All this is happening, and there's banda music, there's mariachis, there's trios, fireworks going, going off, all this stuff, all at one time for over an hour. You thought last year, an hour and 20 minutes was a little bit much, this is 100 years. They're, gonna, they're, they're going out with a bang. See? We do that every year, and we dance in that explanada. Laura and I dance with the banda music as fireworks are going off above us. And I can see the crew here with uh, lighting up these ones, lighting up those ones, and I can look over here up on top in the sky. That is the battle between San Miguel Arcangel and Lucifer up in the sky. That's what's going on. That's why we do this. See? And, you know, we, we don't, again, that's something that will be up for more than 24 hours going through this. So I want you to know that it takes, it takes a lot to go to prepare for this, to actually simulate 
the battle between St. Michael and Lucifer up in the sky. That's what we do, okay? To, I mean, I think most of us have been around for a while in San Miguel de Yeti knew that, right? See, 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 claro, claro. So to, please don't take it the wrong way that when we, when we light up all these fireworks, see? I wanted you to see these monitors, Diego, el video de los cohetes, see? Take a look at this brief clip of these Alborada for the battle between St. Michael and Lucifer. That, that was pretty extreme, and that happens every year. Um, you know, th we do that at night time, and I, you know, I want, want you to get a little glimpse and understand why we do this, see? And I just want to thank you for being part of this, being part of the community of San Miguel de Allende, um, and being here, and actually being here with Laura and I, it's been such a, like the, the song we sang a little bit, it's a joyful day. I just want to thank everybody here, and this is uh, to Don Mr. Ledesma that carries the torch for us for La Alborada and our patron saint, San Miguel Arcangel. Gracias. It's a day, let me tell you, it's a day. We've done it once, we've been here for 10 years, and we, we did it once, <laughs> once. <laughs> now I love the Reseña, because that is for old people and young people, and it's safe, and I mean, you really get the flavor of Alborada, but you can go home. <laughs> <laughs> and be okay without fireworks on top of you. So mark down the 20th of, of September, because that's, that's the day you'll see us out there, and we'll be on our rooftop watching the 4 o'clock in the morning. We're not going to go down there again. So thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. We all learned so much about that, and uh, we thank you for your service to, to, to our community. So it's my turn now to, to do the offering. And a religious community is like a river, formed from many streams and our lives that meet and merge and flow into the sea. As members and friends of this religious community, we share our time and energy, our creativity and imagination, our talents, skills, and gifts to, to create a river that is both deep and broad. A river that is made of many streams, sustains life, and refreshes the land from which it flows. But the river in this community also depends upon shared financial support. That support makes, our, uh, makes real our shared vision and values. We will now receive an offering for the support of our fellowship. You are invited to give generously and joyfully as you are willing and able. Thank you.
Okay, uh, that was just marvelous, Efrain and Laura. Thank you so much again for, for all of us, for us gr gringos who go running for our earplugs this time of year. Thank you for reminding us that there's so much meaning behind what we're seeing and hearing. And this is not noise for the sake of noise. This is really meaningful celebration. Now, because we've run a little long, we hate to do this because De Colores is a wonderful song, but we will pass on that. It's a little bit long, unless you don't mind staying an extra five minutes, yeah? Well, okay. And then after that, perhaps we can, um, we're having Javier Estrada will play our postlude for us, so do make sure you stay for his final um, guitar piece. He's made a special trip for us, and I know we've asked him to be here a long time today. So we're going to sing the song because you asked for it. And Jerry's back on the piano. Wonderful. So are we ready? Everybody rise. Take a seat. Thank you for staying for that. That's a wonderful way to end. Do the closing words. We'll do our closing words and enjoy a postlude with Javier Estrada. Be ours a religion which, like sunshine, goes everywhere. Its temple, all space. Its shrine, the good heart. Its creed, all truth its ritual works of love, its profession of faith, divine living. Those are words from Theodore Parker, an early Unitarian Universalist minister. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth. 
the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we're together again. Please enjoy the postlude with Javier Estrada. Thank you. 